For many decades, Jamaicans were actively encouraged by the British government to leave their homes and come to the UK. That open invitation has over time become less and less welcoming. This week, the country awaited the controversial return of citizens, some of whom haven't stepped on Jamaican soil in decades. These deportations are big news, not just in the UK, but here in Jamaica. And generally, the prevailing view splits into two. The first is, what were they thinking? They knew they could get deported if they committed a crime, but they still did. The second, though, is that particularly for those people who came to the UK when they were children, it seems to be quite a dispassionate, unsympathetic thing to do to people that are far more British than Jamaican. Rayan Crawford says he came to the UK when he was 12, 22 years ago. He's now staying with his sister, who stayed behind in Jamaica. This is the first day in a country he only has grainy memories of. I've been with my partner about 14 years. I've been with my partner, we have two kids back in the UK. I've got my dad who lives in the UK and I'm just here. Do you feel British or Jamaican? I feel British. I was there from a child. I went to school there. I went to college there. I, I, I spent my whole life there. Even my clothes, I had no clothes. I came here with one little plastic bag with two pairs of jeans in it. <laughs> so everything is still in the UK. Rayan was convicted of burglary three years ago and spent 12 months in prison. Since then, he's been fighting his deportation. Two weeks ago, he was detained. And on Tuesday, his final pleas for mercy fell on deaf ears. The day of the actual deportation, what happened? That experience was terrible. I was in a room. I was lying down watching the news. The door flew open about 10 guys there with shields coming to jump and you to detain you, to, to, to take you. I, I had to say to them, I'm not resisting, I'm not fighting or anything, it's not necessary. Rayan is registered disabled. He has a bone disease and inflammatory arthritis really that causes him that. severe pain. He says though, despite numerous requests, he wasn't able to bring his medication. They I told him I didn't have the medication. It's their, their response, if you didn't have it on you at the time of being detained, then we cannot give it to you. Even if it's life-threatening, we cannot give it to you without getting reports from GP and doctors. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I was panicking so much, my heart started getting pain in my chest. I thought I was going to have a heart attack or something. You know, even on the plane, I was crying. I was in my back was killing me in so much pain, I was crying. Some people will say you committed a crime, the government has every right to deport you. I regret what I've done. I hold up my hand and I regret what I've done. I don't think I'm a danger to the public. And going forward, what are you going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do because there's, there's nothing around here to do. There's, there's no work around here or anything. Even finding somewhere to stay, I don't know how long I can stay here. This is not my, my house, you know? So even all of that, it's, it's, it's like, where am I going to go from here? Last week, Newsnight reported the leak of a draft review into the Windrush scandal. That review recommended that the government should consider ending all deportation of foreign national offenders where they arrived in the UK as children, say, before the age of 13. Alternatively, deportation should only be considered in the most severe cases. The tragedy for Rayan is that if that review were to be implemented as a non-violent offender who arrived in Britain aged 12, it's very unlikely he would have been considered for deportation. Many of Tuesday's deportees are now strung out across Kingston in temporary accommodation supplied to them by a charity. Jamaica may be a holiday destination, but the country has its rough sides. Part of the capital is in a state of emergency and it has an eye-watering murder rate. It's not a place to be with no money or no support. So this is your new place, right? Basically where I'm staying at the moment, you know, until I at least sort out what I'm going through. Rupert was also on Tuesday's flight and once again has an unmistakably British accent. He says he was released with nothing but the clothes on his back. He has no close family, so he's staying with a charity. 
So these are the clothes from... you came onto the flight yeah. with? Yeah, these are the clothes I literally came on the flight with. So I've got them washed so I can put them back on today. And whose clothes are these? The person who I'm staying with because I needed to wash my clothes, so I have to put something on while they're being dressed. And those are all the clothes you have? That's Just everything. This, these hanging up? Everything. One boxes, one pair of socks, a vest, a top, and tracksuit bottoms. Rupert says he came to the UK when he was 13. He's now 32. In 2016, he was given a custodial sentence after getting into a fight and attacking another man with a wrench. It's his youngest child's birthday today, and he managed to speak to her on the phone. She says, where am I? said to her, Daddy's at college, you know, so when Daddy's finished college, I'll be home. Once I finish college, I will have to go back to college again, you know. I can't really tell her, yeah, Daddy, you, I'm not sure if you ever see your dad again or Daddy's not in the country. She won't know what that means. Tell me how you're feeling at the moment. Numb, uh, hurt, wounded. There's a, lot, there's a lot of words to go through, but the one at the moment is just numb, you know. There's no sensation, there's no feeling. It's almost as if someone just took everything about your life from you. You just feel empty. There's no other feeling to put to it, just emptiness, you know? My whole family, wife, partner, kids, mum, brother, sister, niece, nephews, cousins, everyone's abroad. Some people watching this might say, you don't have a British passport, you committed a violent crime and the British government has every right to deport you. Yeah, that's, that's, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Like I said, I've done my crime, I've served my time. If I was a British child, it would have finished at me serving my time. But because I'm Jamaican, it's like I'm serving my sentence three times over. Like, you can't judge someone based on one mistake. Despite the leaked Windrush review, Boris Johnson has made it very clear that he wants these foreign criminals out. But many of the people I've spoken to here don't feel foreign, they feel British. Rayan is still positive. He believes that Boris Johnson is a good man, but has been advised badly. Do, do you have a message for Boris Johnson? <laughs> you know, that's very funny, because somebody asked me, how did you vote in the election just gone? And I said I voted for Boris Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I think I think he was a good. I think he was the made a good prime minister. He was going to be a good prime minister, but some things need to change. I think some of the law that you some of the law need adjusting and looking at again. Whatever you think about Rayan and Rupert, whether you think they deserve a second chance or not, they leave five young children in the UK without a dad. They'll try to come back, but now they're in Jamaica, that may prove difficult. It's possible they may never come back to Britain again, a country they love and call home.